And good evening, YouTube. I think I've pretty much decided uh, to keep my game development streams on YouTube streaming and leave the Twitch side of things for when I do gameplay analysis. So uh, for those of you that follow my channel, the few of you that do, uh, this the, all the streams that I will be doing on the YouTube side of things will be game development focused and there will be no further game development streams on Twitch that will be reserved for, like I said, gameplay analysis type streams. We'll begin with the uh, core of the content here in just a few moments. Need to get a couple of advertisements done. And then we can begin. Let's go ahead and get things moving here. Let's turn off the cat. Make sure I have the chat up and ready for monitoring and let's get started. So uh, I've already got some Additional assets, um, assets loaded in here. For the most, I'm using a couple of different uh, paid assets that I picked up off of the uh, itch uh, bundle, uh, ju bundle for justice that they did earlier in the year, and a couple of free things from, or one free thing I should say from Open Game Art. Uh, the theory would be the same, regardless of whether or not you're using paid assets or free assets, obviously. But just to give a quick shout out to the assets that I am in fact using uh, from opengameart.org. I am using, I will be using these uh, walking tiles here. So I've got two frames of animation, um, which I'll probably set up the animation uh, this time around. Uh, from the itch bundle stuff, I'm going to be using some monsters from the Seraph Circle, the Monster Pack 1, constructing the tile maps out of the Heroic Assets Overworld set, and uh, using some of the images from this uh, female mage uh, character pack here. And a lot of the inspiration from this very basic setup that I'm going to be showing uh, comes from the Pepper and Carrot uh, webcomic series, which I absolutely adore. It's an adorable little webcomic series. I love the art style, too, of uh, the artist here. And it's just about this witch doing witchy things. It's a very lighthearted uh, series. And so the general idea here is that we are going to have a witch that is trying to tend to her garden. Uh, but, of course, being a witch, uh, things have gotten a little out of control. So we're going to be facing uh, mutant flowers uh, very uh, evil-looking mushrooms, uh, carrots with eyes, and finally, uh, the greatest enemy of all time, a uh, giant earthworm that apparently breathes radioactive fire? Question mark. And, of course, we'll be using this as the uh, battle sprite for the character. Probably going to mirror that, so looking the other direction. That'll be easy enough to do in scene. And like I said, we've got these um, animations here. 
Actually, it looks like we've got, uh, misspoke, we've got four frames of animation for each direction, not two frames. So we'll have that. And then under tiles, we're going to have this mess to slice up, this mess to slice up, this mess to slice up, and this mess to slice up. So lots of messes to slice up. That is going to, honestly, that's probably going to be the bulk of this video, at least the early portion of it, is getting all these blasted tile systems sliced up. So now that I've said that, let's go ahead and get started on this. Now, of course, if you can figure out the size of your tile set from the description, that's always a plus. And so I can see right here that this is a 16 by 16 tile set. So I don't have to play any guessing games. Sometimes with like free tile sets that you find on Open Game Art, they don't always explicitly state the tile size and you got to play a little bit of a guessing game. But fortunately, I can avoid that. So I know these are 16 by 16 and Due to the sheer size of these, I am not going to go through and try to rename anything. I will just rename as I find it necessary. So I need to take this and make sure it is marked as multiple. And I got to think here. What unity unit size do I want these to be? Um, let's go with 16. I'll do... Keep it to the uh, tile set size, so that will be uh, pixels per unit one. So we'll have 16 unit tiles. Go ahead and apply that. Go into the sprite editor and slice it down to 16. I don't believe there's any padding on these, which sometimes can produce an issue with Unity because Unity loves to get overzealous with blending things. But that looks like a good slice, so you'll go ahead and apply that. And there was something that I forgot to change. You know what? I can actually do that for all of these. I'll just do all these at once. So multiple, one, apply, and I need to make sure, ack, to not click on the wrong thing. And all of these need to turn that filter mode off because this is pixel art. And if you leave the filter mode on for pixel art, it does not look good. So now I have everything set to multiple, one pixel per unit. Filter mode is point, in other words, off. And I can go back to slicing things. So you shall be, now that I've entered in my information once, it should just automatically populate in. Yep, that looks good. Apply. Universal road set, slice, looks good, apply. Universal trees and mountains. Looks good, apply. That one took it a moment because there's a lot of tiles sliced there. To the point where it might actually be a good idea instead of this particular, this one is specifically, instead of just throwing that into one big massive tile map, it might be a good idea to do it separate. Then again, I just might be lazy and just do it all in one. So that got all of those sliced up. Now coming over here, um, the character is already in a series of uh, different images. Now, it looks like if I want the face view, I've got to do that to myself. Uh, I did not see anything to indicate just the facial portrait when I was looking at, at them earlier, uh, which does seem a little bit odd, but I'll check that um, 
off camera to make sure I didn't overlook something there. But there's nothing that really needs to be sliced there. Uh, same thing for the monsters. Um, oh, uh, she's kind of creepy looking. I'll have to see if I can't find a better image for the witch because it's like, mm, yeah, that's a little bit much there. I couldn't really tell from the smaller preview that uh, she was quite so evil looking. So I might come back through and change that off camera. Uh, but I am going to need to slice this and make sure that I have the settings turned off here. Now on this one, I don't think it tells me what that size is. So let's come over here and look. And yep, this is exactly what I was talking about for the uh, open game art stuff. There's nothing on here that tells me what the pixel size is on this. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of guess where it looks like it's either probably going to be 16 or 32. So let's change this to multiple. I don't know what I need to change my pixels per unit to yet, so I'm going to leave that alone. Um, I will change my filter mode to point, hit apply, and let's see what happens if we do a 16 slice. Okay, well... Uh, actually, then, it looks like it's not a 32, but 64. So let's try that. So slice. Sixty-four. And there we go. That gets me what I need. Now, since these are 64 images, but they need to fit on a 16 grid, um, I've got, there's a couple of options I have. I could do the pixels per unit, or I could scale the image. Um, I think I'm going to do the pixels per unit. So if I set it to a pixels per unit of 1, that's 64. If I divide that by 2... That is 32. If I divide that by 2 again, that is 16. So my pixels per unit needs to be 0.25. And hit apply. And I am going to do just a quick sanity check, which is always a good thing to do. Um, let's just real quick change... This camera size to 32. Uh, it still seems like I've got my size badly wrong here. Uh, let's go into my tile atlases and grab... Oh, um, because I am an absolute moron and I went the wrong direction. Uh, basic math for the win. What I should have done is multiplied it. Because again, pixels per unit. So the more pixels it takes to make a unit, the smaller the image is going to be. So that really should have been times two times two. So pixels per unit of four. And let's actually try to grab a tile yep okay that is the correct size then So I have everything sliced up. So the next thing I want to do is put out my maps. So I'm going to have one main map. This is not going to be as large as uh, the requirements 
for the project that my students have uh, because that would just it would take too long to set that up. So I'm just going to have the witch's home uh, with something to talk to in there. I'm going to need to figure out, s grab some more images later on, I think. But I'm going to have the witch's home with something to talk to. Um, one ma uh, map that has like all the veggies in it. And then a map that has the worm in it that she has that is the final boss fight. So I'm going to need three scenes right off the bat. So I'm going to open up the level templates. And I'm going to check my level data grid size of 16. Okay, that is fine. And I am going to go ahead and configure my basic player now. Because this is something that's going to get duplicated across uh, every scene. I guess I could also modify the prefab itself directly. But let me just go ahead and modify this here a little bit. Because there are some things. I know I can do. So I've got, you know, I have a grid of 16 on the character. Uh, let's see here, going back into the demo sprites, assuming I can click correctly. Okay, so we use sprite zero as sort of the demonstration. Uh, let's see here, main camera. That is a freaking huge size. So I have 16 size tiles. How many tiles do I want to see? Half height. So let's say half height of five. So I see 10 tiles. That seems a little low. Let's do half height of six. So that will give me 12 tiles total on the vertical. Let's just do a quick maximize on play. Hit the run button. Because again, this is something that I help oh, and forget that it's going to do that. Um, set my scale to one. That is. Yeah, because this thing here is I don't want particularly large maps, so that might be a little bit large on the sprite, but I think that'll work out okay. So we will go with that camera size. Uh, we are on a 16 grid. And then come down here for the movements. Let's switch these so I can see... So it looks like for down, I would have this one, this one, this one, this one. We'll find out whether that's right or not. Uh, left would be this one, this one. Here we go. Here's the other two lefts. And... Right would be these, and then up would be these. Save out my level template. Now I do, before I start getting too crazy here, I do want to test this. So let's grab core and let's put in the editor override of level template.
Yeah, I need to turn down that animation speed, like, drastically. Um, That is probably an error related to something else. It's like, okay, it's not the greatest animation in the world, and I'm not entirely convinced that some of these animations are supposed to be walking animations instead of attack animations. But that is something to be cleaned up at a later date. So that was what point one. All right, so that takes care of my basic player. Let's go ahead and remove core. I don't really need it right now. Well, so it was a bit premature. So we'll need it back here in a moment. So let's get these files saved out. So I'm going to do a save as. Stuff them into here. So this will be which home. Do a file save as. which garden file save as and this will be let's do which cave And that takes care of my scene. So I can immediately then go into my build settings. I am going to delete out all of the previous uh, demo scenes, leaving me with my core main menu game over scenes, which I have to leave in unless I want to go in and start mucking around with code, which is not the point of this demonstration. And I need to add in a bunch of other scenes. So let's come over here to which demo, grab those, toss those in. Now, at some point, I'm going to also have to add in my battle scenes, but I will worry about those later. You know what, I'll just go ahead and create the folder for those now. So I've got that set up now for the witch battle scenes. And I can add in my core scene. And I can set the starting map to witch home. And I can remove, at least for the moment, my editor override. I'll probably come back and do that one later again. And let's remove which cave. Add in the which home scene. And now I can start working on that. Now, of course, before I can start working on that, I need to create yet another tile.
palette. So, coming back over to my demo sprites and the tile atlases, got a bunch here that I got to add in. For the moment, let's just add in the land tile set. Now, that is still going to be 300 freaking tiles, but it is what it is. So let's create a new palette. Land tile set, everything defaults are fine. So we will create and... <coughs> oh, goodness gracious, excuse me. That was a mighty sneeze. <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um, although, don't ignore that uh, promo material too much. But all right, so I have, let's see here, let's give ourselves a new folder here. And this will be, what is this again? This is the grassland tile set. And proceed to lag the everlasting heck out of my computer for the moment as it goes through and tries to generate 300 some odd tiles. Now, I could be a little bit more efficient about this and expand out the tile sets and only bring in the tiles that I'm going to want to use. And that might be a worthwhile effort if I had a slower computer, but I've got a pretty gosh darn fast computer, so it's not something that I am particularly worried about. Now... I think I will also add in the mountain tiles here. So let's... New folder, tree and mountain tiles, 1,288. Okay, so while that is chewing on things, let's talk a little bit about the design. Because, again, balancing is a very important part of game design critical important part of RPG design, and that's sort of really the core of what I'm going at here. So what I'm going to have is in the main sort of witch's home area, I need to have something I can interact with to raise the witch's stats. Uh, due to the limitations of this framework, it is not very efficient or effective to try to add additional skills to the witch. So I have to rely on increasing stats to make certain skills more viable. And I do want to try to put a certain level of progression. So initially, the witch will have a very strong magic attack which will enable the witch to complete one quest. Upon completing that quest, uh, they'll be able to, the witch will be able to upgrade their physical attack, which will enable them to complete the next quest. And then upon completing that one, the witch will be able to upgrade physical defense, which will enable them to survive the attacks from the worms. Or I might even make it upgrade magic defense um, to survive the worm's laser blast, because it, it really does look like that worm is about ready to do a laser blast on the player. And so I want to try to get that layout done up as soon as I can. So there we go. There's a bunch of trees and such. Um, I am trying to remember where in this set, 
Okay, that's the cave set. Universal Road, Universal Trees. I think it might have been the Universal Buildings that had the building information in it. That is something I can fix off camera because I want to try to keep this as focused as possible. So let's build out at least the initial version of the Witch's Home. So let's zoom in on these tiles here. I do have some platform-like areas. Now these... Side tiles aren't going to work because I only have direct... Um, up, down, left, right motion. I don't have any side motions and it looks like I guess that's sort of to the side sort of down that would look a little bit strange though the player was standing on that and it looks like that's the corner for getting up onto this ledge sort of do I have a ramp on this because I've not used this tile set before it does not look like I have a ramp, so I am... These areas would be more decorative than anything else. I'm just going to grab the basic green tile here. Grab the paintbrush, and... Ah, yes, that's an offset that I'm going to have to fix. And let's check my tile map first, actually, to make sure that I have my layers set correctly. So this is on sorting layer tile. Um, I will call this ground map. As here, I don't want things to be too big. So let's go for this as the initial play area. Now let's just do a quick run here. Oh, hello, flickering lines. I need to fix that because that is going to be dreadfully annoying. Oh, and I need to fix the fact that um, I'm off center on everything and that these are generating collisions. So do I have, should I have that on the camera? I don't, okay. So let's, so I'm looking for basic player prefabs. So T colon prefab, basic player, there we go. Let's open up this prefab and let's add the pixel perfect camera onto here. Have that as my reference resolution. Make sure that my game is also set to that. It is this spot right here. And back out. Let's run this again. Oh, hello. Why are you doing that? Um, Uh, assets, pixels per unit. I missed that setting. So let's come back into here and change that. Okay, so that zooms me out and a little bit too much and i need to offset the sprites so instead of being center i believe it needs to be lower left for characters uh 
or actually probably the better way of doing this would be to move the sprite renderer into a child, which that's what I would normally do. But since I'm trying to keep this as close as possible to what I expect my students to do, I will not. Instead, I will go and modify the sprite. So go back into the sprite editor. And I'm going to re-slice it. And I'm going to put the pivots in the bottom left this time. Yep, okay, that works other than the whole needing to uh, <laughs> fix the collider here. And this particular tile Let's see here. It's supposed to tell me somewhere on here which tile this is. I think I might have turned off that window, which is unfortunate. Well, I will have to do this the hard way then, I suppose. This is fairly early on in the numbering sequence. So let's go into Tile Atlas, Grassland Tiles, Inspector, Tile Zero. Okay, excellent. Collider type, none. And what else? Probably also this one here should also be non-colliding tiles. As well as a lot of these here too. So let's just go through and just real quick, you should be none. Let's see here. Everything th up through there should be nuns. That definitely should have a collision. That definitely should not have a collision. And it looks like we're back to another chunk of non-collisions. So 17 to 20 should be none. I'm not so sure about these little bushes. That should be none. And so what is this? 20 three to 28. We'll make those none. So that takes care of a lot of those. Now, potentially the only other thing that I might want to change would be some of these patterns down here to enable me to have 
um, different fills, for lack of a better word. I'm not going to worry about that quite yet. So let's... All right, that has to go on a different layer. But I can test here real quick to make sure. Yep, now I gotta fix, okay, the camera issue. Let's run it, pause it. All right, let's expand out, look at the main camera here. There we go, a value of four for the pixels per unit reference works pretty good. And I'm able to zip around pretty good here. So I think this would make a decent size for the level. Excellent, so that, let's go back and actually make that on the prefab. Basic player, and the main camera, pixels per unit reference of four. Hold up, did I save that properly? I have auto save turned on. Okay, I guess I just didn't update it correctly. There we go. Now, I'm doing a lot of testing and just making sure that I've locked in the visual feel here. Almost looks like it's going in reverse. And in the case of the up sprite it doesn't seem to be animating correctly I'm still not entirely sure why map logic is complaining about an exception error there but I'm definitely gonna have to hunt that down at some point I am just going to real quick double check to make sure that up. Okay, it is set to a size four. Seems like on up and down is where it seems to go. Left and right, no error down hmm nope okay I will track that down later so I've got the basic layout here so what I want to do now is fill in such that the player is constrained. So let's switch back to the tile palette. This is sort of a forest area. Now I could also use um, the cliff faces here. I think this, these are the ramps. Okay, I think these here are supposed to be my ramps. Let's just... Check that real quick. Oops. And 
yeah, that's okay. So there's there's the ramps. And of course, I still uh, I'd have to go back through and make sure that that would actually work. Now, this is a flaw in this particular tile set. At least it's a flaw in how I use the tile sets because I don't actually have a good way of using this regardless because everything's based on a tile. So if I leave these edges as a blocked tile, that means the character, well, it's actually even can show it to you since they're going to be blocked tiles. That's as close as I can get on this side, which doesn't really look very good. It seems like I should be able to go onto this tile. And then, of course, you know, this tile. Oh, looks like I managed to glitch in. But I should, you know, be able to... Either walk onto this tile here or walk onto this tile here, but not past this boundary. Well, the way I have things set up, I can't do that. I would need a full tile thick, like boundary piece here. So instead of having this razor thin edge, like it looks a little bit, whoops, I don't know why this is not. Oh, yes, actually, I know exactly why it's doing that, and I'll fix that in a moment. Um, this looks okay-ish, still seems like I should be able to get a little bit closer, but it's okay relative to this. And I know exactly what's causing that issue, it's because I changed the scale and did not change the uh, collision box on this. So that should be a one by one scale, which then I need to make sure that my collider box is equally scaled correct, which, mm, let's see here. Let's see your character template, demo sprites. I should have done this from the beginning. This is what you get for being lazy and not doing things correctly. So you can see how tiny my little collider box is now that I have the proper image in here. Um, but really shouldn't be one. So let's see here, 16 by 16. No, that's the offset. You know what? Let's just do it this way. There we go. Now I got nice, neat, even numbers. So now that I have my collision box proper okay yep looks good here as well let's make sure that I didn't accidentally change anything else okay yep box collider looks fine main camera still looks fine with its settings yep so yeah, from, it's just, it looks weird, is what I'm trying to say, and probably I think it's just spent the last five minutes trying to say, it looks weird with the way this tile set is set up, compared to how I have my collision set up. So I wouldn't really want to use these raised pieces anyways, because that would just take way too much work to actually make them look good. So I will instead 
use these various um, trees to block things off and also mountains as well. So I'm wanting to use that mountain set. So let's put some mountains over here. And I am not getting my layering very correct on this. Hmm. These have some weird layering to them. So you know what? Yeah, yeah, no, Phil's not going to work. Let's go through here and tidy that up a little bit. And then since I'm fairly certain I will still be able to see. Well, let's finish my border first. Then I'll worry about putting in the extra grass boundaries to make sure it doesn't look weird. Um, and since it looks like I'll have to pay extra special attention, I think maybe if I use this, it tiles correctly. There we go. Okay, so I paint with the center. And then I can come back in. Ooh, these are transparent backgrounds. I was just noticed, just noticed that. That looks very, very, very weird. So rapid fire control Z. So I need. A boundary map and I'm going to need yeah no I just need a boundary map and that'll have colliders on it okay so now that I'm on the boundary map let's make sure that my sorting layer is on tile decorations because I need to be this above tiles now I can go back through and now that I've figured out how to use the mountains correctly, let's grab that mountain fill. And I'll come back up and come back and clean that up later. And let's go for some of this style of tree. Paint down. And this will be for a fairly sizable portion here. And we can fill that in. And let's go for some, let's go for, actually, you know what? Uh, let's just fill in a whole bunch of forest here. And let's, 
Okay, so I do have all the little bits and bobs for being able to do corner pieces and such. Oops, nope, not there. Um, let's grab... Put in a little bit of a lake here. Let's fill that in. Fill that in with a lake, and I think to quote a YouTuber that I am fond of watching, in a stunning effort of good enough, we shall leave it like that. So that, oh, and I need to get rid of uh, whoops, control Z. Let's hide the ground map. Oh, and I was painting on the ground map this entire time because I was not paying attention to what I was doing because once again, I proved that I am a doofus. And this is why you do things like check visibility so I just need to hammer control Z for a bit all right so I'm going to hide the ground map I am going to reset the boundary map because I don't want any of this information well yeah, I don't want any of this information on the boundary map, even if I am going to potentially put more information back here, but I doubt it. Okay, so I'm going to go into the tile map and I'm going to reset it. I'm going to turn back on the ground map because I do need to be able to see this. Now, this time I'm going to pay attention to the active tile map. And make sure that the active tile map is on the boundary map. And I'm going to go through and do this all again a sixth time. Because life loves repetitions. There we go. Fill that in. Uh, let's grab my trees here. Right. Boy, I can't do that. That should have been a clue to me right there when I was doing that with the trees. Now I am going to come back and fill that in with some water at some point. But since I know that I want to have the bulk of my barrier to be the trees, I'm going to want to do that first. So I'm pretty sure if I have it... Yeah, if I have it like this, with the boundary created. There we go. Now that's probably massive overkill on what I need to actually do. Oh, there's no kill like overkill. Ah, hello. I see a student has wandered into the chat. Greeting, greetings. And there we go. I cannot see the edge of the world, which is my main concern. 
I am far less concerned about the massive uniformity of the forest than I am about ensuring that I can't see the edge of the world. Now ensure, okay, yep, I'm still on boundary map. Let's put in that water feature. So grab the water. Recreate my lake. There we go, and you know what? Yeah, I'll leave those mountains there. All right, so let's toggle off ground. Okay, yep, that is still looking good. So let's switch my active tile map back to ground map. Okay, that is what I want. As I also want to get rid of all of that. Put in some decorations, oops. And to actually put in decorations like these, I'm gonna have to do yet another map. Uh, so I've got the ground map. Let's duplicate that again. So I've got ground map zero two, which I will rename decorations. Now I don't actually want any collisions on decorations ever for any reason. So I'm going to go back into the inspector and I am going to remove the composite and I'm going to remove the tile map collider off of decorations. I'm also going to ensure that sorting layer is still tile decorations. And then actually on the ground map, I do need to expand out, well, the ground, so that way we don't have uh, transparency showing up through the trees. So making sure that again, I am on ground map. I'm going to switch to the Paint Fill tool. I don't really care about being overly precise here because the player's not going to see that far out regardless. And now let's switch to the Decorations map. which does not seem to be on the proper layout. Let's go back over here. Okay, so decorations is on the sorting layer, tile decorations, which means it should, unless I did that on the, let's, boundary map has nothing. Okay, let's hide all our maps. Oh, decorations also needs to be reset. Okay, so I am on decorations, right? Yes, reset components, tile palette. Uh, decorations grid get messed up somehow. So I do not seem to have
Okay, now I am legitimately quite confused right now because all of a sudden, it seems like I have lost the ability to paint down. Oh, because I was on the arrow instead of the paintbrush. Uh, sometimes Unity can be very sneaky, but and I know what probably happened. I probably reflexively hit the S key to try to move. And that did not work. All right, so let's try this again. Switch over to decorations, grab a flower, make sure I'm actually on the paintbrush. No, decorations is still. Ground map is working. Boundary map is working. Decorations is not. Um because your sorting layer is still set to tile. Oh, because I reset it. There we go. It's got to go through and recheck things bit by bit to make sure that you're actually doing it right. And there we go. A few decorations scattered around. Now, I do need to figure out how I'm going to indicate where I can go to leave to different maps. And I'm only going to do two different maps. I'm going to do the cave entrance there. And then probably over here going towards the garden. So I believe that would be a simple enough matter. Let's make sure that I am on the ground map. Make sure I got some solid green going down there. Let's switch to the boundary map and the eraser. I don't actually intend for the player to get that far, so let's just check our visuals again. Ah, so I do need to add a little bit more. So if I put the map transition point right here, a couple tiles in, I do need to make sure that, okay, I, I need to extend that out a little bit. So let's go back to boundary. Let's grab our... tree and actually that's all I really need to do yep so if I put the map transition 3 in right there that will work I don't think I have anything that's going to work well as a cave transition point. Let's look at the cave tile set here real quick. And it does not look like there's really much here either. I have a plain blank black tile. Well, I think in that case, I'll just do the same thing over here, actually. So I will make sure that I am on the boundary map. And let's erase a few tiles in. Eh, it's a little cheesy, but um, it'll work for now. 
It does give off the sense that there is something there. I'd prefer a more traditional cave entrance, but you work with what you got. And I don't got one at the moment. And so now... I can set up the map transitions. So that is going to be the map transition game object or a prefab. Now I'm going to check something here. Did I attach? I did not. Hide sprite on play. I do want that. Um, I don't know what the pixel size is on this image, but I can adjust it easily enough. And let's make your for prefab. You should have a default position of zero. Thank you very much. Uh, size 16. Okay, so this is already on a 16 grid. Excellent. So let's take that prefab then. Plonk that in. Uh, let's see. Okay, so the tile palette is still wanting to be active there. There we go. Because I want that on the grid, otherwise things go squirrely. And why on earth are you in core? Get into there. You know what? Let's just to be on, on the safe side. Let's unload core so I can't accidentally add anything else to it. So this will be map transition to garden and which garden I believe is what I called it. Yes, which garden. Okay. With the target at zero, zero. Over here. Let's duplicate that and yoink it over here. This can be transition to cave. This will be the witch cave. Again, we'll leave the target at zero, zero. I just thought of something as that. That's what I thought. I put that on the boundary, but I'm not going to fix that small error there. It shouldn't be on the boundary. It's a good lesson, and you have to really pay attention to which tile map you were working with. Otherwise, you can introduce errors. And you know what? I'm going to fix that. That should not be on boundary. So I am going to switch to erase. I'm going to make sure I'm on boundary. I am going to erase it. I'm going to switch over to ground, and I will paint it in on ground. Um, no, you need to be on the decoration layer, actually, because you don't have a background. Well, I've got that map transition there, so I am not concerned. Well, let's save that and let's get a small little garden map made up.
And I'm going to have to get the paths added in here, aren't I? The more I think about this, the more I'm like, yeah, yeah, I need those paths. Let's go ahead and get that done and over with. Let's come over here into the tile atlases. Universal road tile set. Um, how big are you, universal road tile set? Not too big, so I can plonk you there. Create a new folder. Now this is a smaller one, so it wouldn't take won't take it too long to get created. And you know what, let's, uh, well actually first, let's go into road, control A, inspector, collider type, none, because a road doesn't need collision. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see here. I like this sort of the gray dirt rocky road. So we'll use this now. Let's make sure decorations. Yeah. Okay. Decorations. That sounds about right. Leading off into the distance there. And let's say the witch's house is right about there. And I've got lots of pieces here to play with. Uh, let's see here. I need a turn down, turn down, turn down. Go through here and hook up a few connection pieces there. There we go. We have a nice little path now for there. So let's open up the garden map. And I know at a minimum I'm going to need that decoration layer. So before I put anything down, let's duplicate that out. And make sure that the sorting layer is set to tile decorations. Now, this is a bug with this particular framework. There is a small chance, I haven't really nailed down why this bug happens yet, but there's a small chance when you transition scenes that you will automatically take one step in the direction that you were traveling in, regardless of collisions which is not a good thing so since i enter this map from the left i want to make sure that i can travel one frame to the left uh, before anything happens and i come in at zero zero here so let's grab those trees again and I need this to be on the boundary layer. So again, let's duplicate. So it'll be my boundary tiles. Let's make sure that you are on the tile decoration layer. I am on my boundary tiles. So we'll draw in that boundary. 
I don't want the garden to be too big. Now I can use the paint can to fill in the blanks, so to speak. Switch over here to the ground tiles. Grab that nice uh, green. Fill in the background. Switch to boundary, grab that eraser, erase back, let's switch to decoration, get our path in, and then we can have it split, I'm pretty sure I saw, yep, here we go. So do I have a four-way? Can't tell if that's a... No, that's more of a blob than it is a four-way. Ah, here we go. Here's the four-way. Gonna have that like that. See here, I need to go back and erase that, erase that. Put in a turn there, put in a turn there. And link everything back up. So put a curve, put a curve. A three way and link it up. And I would also want, let's switch to ground. A little lake down here in the corner, I think. Now, unlike the platform tiles, the water tiles are configured that I am going to be able to use the edge pieces. And I think I've got all the necessary little corner bits to make it look decent. So let's put in a nice little... Oops, Control-Z. Um, yeah, so I've got the boundary layer there as well. So I guess we'll just make this fit the boundary layer. So we got a nice little pool. Now, do I have a good three-sided? There's not really seen anything. It looks like it's really designed for that. So you know what? I will just erase. <coughs> Excuse me. I believe I will be cutting off the stream here uh, relatively soon. 
because I've been at this for almost an hour and a half. And it is getting a little bit late. I'm also fairly certain that I'm going to be acquiring some spousal aggro here in a moment if I uh, don't get off somewhat soon. And again, since I don't really have a good three-way piece, uh, instead of fighting it, let's work with it. So let's, I'm on ground, so replace that. Let's go to boundary. And put in a tree there. Switch back to ground. There we go. We have a nice little eh, I can't really put a water feature in there. Um uh, well I actually yes I could. I could put this little rock in anywhere I want as long as I switch over to the decoration layer. There we go. That works out fairly well. And you know what? I think these kind of look like the lily pads. Okay. So a little bit of decoration there. And this can be the garden. And let's say, okay, so let's... Okay, these are now officially carried flowers. Okay, decoration. Yeah, yeah, let's put these on the decoration layer. And then as long as I have this on the decoration layer these odd little fruity looking things there we go that looks like a nice little garden um So let's see how that looks. So let's save it. Let's hit the run button. Thought, uh, oh, right. I don't think I took the uh, collision layer off for the deco layer on this map. Decoration tiles, inspector. Yeah, I still have all the colliders on here. So remove, remove, test. Again, I know I'm constantly going through and testing, but really is a good idea to just constantly test, 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 test. Ad nauseum. So this is the only way that you find little errors in time to make it reasonably easy to correct. And yeah, if I want th three in, well, that's zero, zero. So my map transition would actually have to go there. And this will, which, 
home? I'm horrible at remembering my own names, which is, by the way, why a design document would be phenomenally useful. Because if I have a design document and I've got a list of all of the level names in the design document, I don't have to worry about remembering the level names. And then I, indeed, I did call it Witch Home. And now we get to one of those pain points in the system where I do need to go look up the target X, target Y on this. So let's hide the Witch Garden, drag in Witch Home. Take a look at this. And actually, let's uh, <clears throat> I'll move it over one. Let's lock this. Let's add in a new inspector tab, which I'll yoink down here. Map transition to which home? And my coordinate is minus 240, minus 48. Now I can take this, move it back one position. And I can unload. Let's just make sure I did actually do the right one. Yes, okay. So let's remove the witch home scene. And let's go ahead and test this. Oh, I know what the error messages are. I took out all the battle scenes. And so it's uh, yelling at me every time it tries to do a random encounter. Yep, yeah, okay. So I need to... Actually, apparently, extend on both maps. All right. So, ground tiles. Oops, no, I didn't want to pop you out. Get back over there. Ground tiles need to be extended out. So, we'll do that. Let's go then to boundary. I said boundary. All right, and then decoration. Use the eyedropper just to pick that up and extend that out. And so I can see the previews a little bit better. Let's, what camera size is that pixel perfect camera thing? Setting my camera to. I can probably get rid of that. Um, I'm setting it to camera size 135 is what it's automatically setting things to. So let's set you to 135 as well. So I can get a better idea of my camera. Okay, so that works. Let's save that out. Let's open up which home. Let's uh, move my player over here and set my camera size. 135. Yep, okay. Simple enough to fix. I'm on boundary map. Let's erase out some more. Switch to decorations. Grab the path. Paint it down, save test. All 
Okay, I don't see anything wrong there. All right, before I call this video, although it is getting awfully long in the tooth for a uh, creation video, well, let's get the cave set up. I'm just going to do something small with the cave. Let's go ahead and just have everything loaded into one big freaking massive pallet. Uh, so let's go into my demo sprites, tile atlas, uh, cave. You are going to be large. And eh, not too large. Let's chunk you in there. Get a quick cave set up, which is where the final enemy is going to be. It's going to be a small one, a very small level. So it should not take me very long to create it. And again, I'm going to be going, this time I'm going to be going to the right. So I'm going to make sure I design my map that way, that I go to the right, come back out to the left. So let's open up the witch cave. The player should be at zero, zero, which I am. Okay, excellent. Let's get my level data set up. So I have my ground tiles, boundary tiles. Decoration, tiles, and on decoration tiles and boundary tiles, their sorting layer needs to be set to tile deco. And on decoration, I let's also let's. Yep, okay, that inspector's been unlocked. Let's go ahead and close out that one. Don't need it. Let's see here. So decoration needs to have the composite collider removed and the tile map collider removed because I do not need those. And basic player, let's set your camera to 135. Again, just so that I have a better preview of how large of an area am I looking at. Okay, so ground tiles this time. I'm going to be looking at these caves. Now, that also means I need to go through and make some more stuff. Um, Collision-free. Now, this time it's going to be a little bit more interesting. in that well no you know what think again just uh tile zero up until here whichever tile that is make those actually all i really need is tile zero and whatever tile that is so the rest of them probably should have collisions because this stuff i'll put on the deco layer anyways because it's got transparent backgrounds so let's just do that keep life simple here and potentially shorten this video time a little bit. So let's go into the cave tiles. Inspector, so tile, this tile needs to be none. And this tile needs to be none. And for the moment, I will leave everything else as collidable. Now, do they have any good walls? Yeah, see, so I don't like the, the they have wall edges. They don't have walls that go 
all the way up, which is a little bit of a problem with how I am using my collisions. Do I have anything that I could... These are okay. What happens if I rotate these? Okay, so let's make sure that I am on ground. Okay, I am on ground. Let's have that be my cave. And so how well does it work? I switch to boundary tiles here. Hmm. Yeah, no, that's not going to work very, very well at all. Uh, you know, when all else fails, let's use the black boundary. I'm inside a cave. And actually, I can cheat really hard here. So your boundary tiles go, no, not decoration, go back to ground. because I can take my main camera and make sure that my main camera's clear color is black, which means other than the boundary tiles, I don't need to paint in any other tiles. As unfortunately, this tile set just does not work well in terms of walls with the way I am using things. Now I might be able to get away with using Yeah, I wouldn't be able to use it right there. But maybe using the deco tiles to put in Do I have a corner piece that I can use? Not really. Hmm. You know what? I'm just going to have to stick with using solid black tiles as um, barriers. So let's switch to ground tiles again. And I can have the oops, nope, too far. The in all likelihood, the shorter path to the worm down here, or the slightly easier to navigate path this way, just so that there's some player choice there, some player agency, even if it doesn't really matter too much.
This is a, going to be a very small one. Need to put in the map transition. Turn off tile palette. There we go. And this is to which home? Now let's add in, just like we did last time, let's add in which home, let's hide the cave, grab this, move it over one, lock, let's add in a new inspector tab. Drag that down here. Select the hidden transition to which home. And the coordinate that I need is 144, 128. All right, move that back. Remove the which home scene. And let's do a test. Hmm, there is a slight color difference. I'll have to make try to make up my mind as to whether or not that slight color difference is enough to make me want to change things. Sarah, hold on. Let's just make sure the difference isn't with my camera. Nope, pure black. All right. I think in that case it still works if I just get rid of these two. So let's switch to boundary tiles, erase, erase that. And I do need to make sure under deco tile, not deco tiles, ground tiles, I put in that extra little bit there. Now let's see how that looks. All right. I do need to come up with, there's still, the next step would be coming up with a talkable, at least one, if not more, talkable NPCs for this area here. Then I need to come up with random fights for this area with uh, two potential repeatable quests to earn a lot of additional gold, perhaps. Um, so I need to have like a boss carrot and a uh, boss mushroom fight here. And maybe I can have random encounters of the flowers for weeds for minor uh, stat improvements. And then when I go into the cave, I can have random encounters against Oh, no, I don't even, don't even you know, I think I need too much in the way of random encounters here. Maybe random encounters against small worms. And then down here in the corner, get something to represent the large worm. Actually, on that matter, let's just do one quick little test. Um, let's grab the interactive object prefab. Plonk that down there. Let's expand this out to look at the sprite. Let's set the sprite to the worm monster, which is surprisingly going to be too small. Oh, because I've got snapping to scale turned on right now.
Nope, negative one. Oops, no, 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 it's not, not the interactive object that I want to be setting that on. It is this. There we go. Yeah, that works out pretty good, I think, actually. Just using the uh, images, uh, the battle images for the monster. See how this looks walking into the cave? Yeah, yeah, you know what? I think that's going to work pretty good just doing that. And I believe this is a good spot to stop because one, it's almost 11 o'clock at night for me. Two, this video has gone on for nearly two hours. And well, this is just a good logical place to stop. We have our maps created. I know how I'm going to set up at least some of the interactable objects. And there's a fair amount of stuff that I need to do off screen. It's not particularly useful, I feel, to watch me go through my collection of images trying to find uh, what I want to use for the NPCs to talk to in the witch's home to try to find maybe something to actually build her a home uh, in that one area and so on and so forth. There's a lot of little middling stuff to do and this is a good break point because the next thing is going to be to set up the skills and then set up the random encounters and then the boss fights. So this is a good breaking point right here. Uh, thank you to uh, anyone and everyone who watched the stream live and to anyone who's also coming along and catching this uh, later on as a VOD. If you found this video to be of use, uh, tap on the thumbs up button would be appreciated. And if you thought that I prattled on entirely too long about nothing, well, then the dislike button is right next to it. Have a good day, everyone, and I look forward to talking to you later.